Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again, man. Hey, just wanted to talk about the Dallas Cowboys draft picks. Um, we talked about the first three, the top three, and uh, with Mozzie Smith. I look at this draft and I give the Dallas Cowboys a B grade for this draft. Um, reason being because they did what they were supposed to do, right? Um, over the, the years, they've been doing better at drafting. You know, I mean, we've, we've done good, especially with our first round draft picks. Now, um, that Mozzie pick, defensive tackle, first time, like, they, look, <laughs> they didn't get a guy like that. They haven't picked a defensive tackle since 91, since Russell Maryland. So that that's something different. It looks like that they're learning from their, their mistakes and realizing that, okay, we need to fix this team where we need to fix it. And we always talked about, oh, the Dallas Cowboys can't stop the run. Well, you know, you got Hankins, you got, you know, Mozzie for the future. So um, it's not about him beating out Hankins. But this, the thing is, you got Hankins for this year. Allow Hankins to be Hankins. But put Mozzie in there because Mozzie's ready to play. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's going to be a good. No pick in this draft did we reach. Every person that we picked in this draft was was picked around the, the area where they were supposed to be picked. Now, Mozzie was rated as a high second-round draft pick. We talked about that. Even though we picked him in the first round, we picked at number 26. We talked about anything after 19 this year, 19 – graded first round draft picks he was graded high second well you do the math pick number 26 is typically a high second round draft pick so he was picked where he was supposed to go so um that was a good pickup uh, that was a will mcclay pickup um he was definitely was talking to the joneses like this is who we need to get right here and um i'm not mad at that the tight end that we got uh schoonmaker um uh, I mentioned that he was a better Dalton Schultz, and I say that because Dalton Schultz wasn't good at run blocking. This guy can run and pass block. Um, he's similar to Dalton Schultz when it comes to catching the ball and, and getting a little bit of yardage down the field. Um, Michigan was more of a running team, but even with the highlights that you see of Schoonmaker catching the ball, he's pretty sturdy with the ball, and and as, as so was Dalton Schultz. But what he has that Dalton Schultz didn't have was that he can – he can pass block, and they're going to utilize him in that capacity. So that's definitely an upgrade. So um, I had uh, initially wanted Osiris Torrance there, but I realized I found out why the Cowboys didn't pick Osiris Torrance. It was typically because of his he had behavior issues. Now, for the Cowboys, they didn't think it was worth picking Osiris, so they picked the tight end um, to help with the pass blocking with the offensive line. Now, Round three, we talked about uh, um, DeMarvion Overshone from Texas. Rangy, rangy athletic, uh, tackling wide, um, linebacker, converted from a safety, converted to a Sam linebacker. I mean, you got a guy that, that's got versatility right there, and he can play special teams too. So that would definitely help with Leighton, Leighton Vander Esch along with Damone Clark and um, uh, Devin Harper. So, you look at that linebacker core, um, I really like that pick because I want to see him right there running sideline to sideline. So, you got Mozzie up front with, with, um, with our current pass rushers. I'm going to tell you one thing. If they, keep that, if they keep that thing clean up front and the defensive linemen are doing what they need to do, the linebackers are going to be able to play free all day, and they're going to be able to um, get those tackles in that second line of defense, and I'm loving that. Um, I actually like that pick. I really do. Now, on this channel, we haven't talked about four through seven yet, so here we go. Round round four, pick number 129, defensive end, Viliami Fehoko Jr. out of San Jose State University. I mean, yeah, San, San, blah, San Jose State. I'm sorry. So um, he, he's no relation to Semi Fehoko, but he is the cousin of Vita Vea from the Buccaneers. Now, if he's if he's anything like um, Vita Vea, that was a damn good pick. Now, I will say, he, he was number 42. Um, I was looking at some of his tape. He has a very high motor. This guy does not quit until he gets to that um, 
to get to that quarterback. Even when he gets shed on blocks, he, he evades that block. When when the when the quarterback is running around, he, he will finish until that whistle is blown. Um, really a good addition to the Dallas Cowboys um, for the future because we don't know how long uh, – we have Demarcus Lawrence. Now, I heard that they were going to kick him inside to the three tech, but I, I really hope that they really give him a chance in training camp at that edge rusher because I want to see what he does at the NFL level. I want to see what he does with NFL talent. Um, but definitely a guy, um, definitely a guy with a high motor on defense is definitely what you want. You want a guy like that that that's not giving up. So there's a definitely positive there, but we'll see what we got with that. Uh, round five. We got uh, a pick one number 69, 169, offensive lineman. Uh, well, it's spelled a sim, but it's pronounced awesome. Awesome Richards from North Carolina. He's 6'4", 309 pounds. He started 38 and 48 uh, career games with North Carolina. And um, I guess the biggest knock on him, the reason why he's a, a fifth-round draft pick is because he – he struggles with defensive linemen with power, right? So, um, but that's something that the Cowboys can fix. You know, get him in the weight room, get him up, just fix his technique a little bit, and I think he'll be all right. Um, he's a he's a tackle guard type of player, so he, he's got a little bit of flex there. Um, I would say that he's definitely a try-hard guy, and um, that's somebody that, that, that you can use for depth. But we'll see what happens with training camp because, again, that's where you definitely see these guys. And I'm always um, a proponent on seeing what these guys do in, in live action, right? Because you don't know if a guy is going to be boom or bust until they get them pads on, until they get the coaches um, under their belt. And I, and I have faith in this coaching staff that these guys, that they will get these draft picks where they need to be. Um, I have that faith. Now, um, Round six, a pick one, 178, cornerback Eric Scott Jr. out of Southern Mississippi. Now, we traded up to the first pick in the sixth round to get this guy because they definitely wanted him because at the time, at that time, he was the best cornerback left on the board um, for the sixth round. Uh, he's six foot, 179 pounds. He had... Um, two interceptions return for a touchdown, and he has 12 career pass breakups with Southern Miss. Now, this guy here, he reminds me of a Deron Bland type of player, a guy that, that, that came to the Cowboys like Deron Bland. We didn't know what Deron Bland could do until he went out there and started doing things. He reminds me of another Deron Bland. I think that's why they picked him up. He has long arms. He has basically... Um, outside of the, the, the top two cornerbacks taken in the draft, uh, including jo Joey Porter Jr. Remember, we wanted Joey Porter. Um, he's the third running back outside of those top two cornerbacks that were picked with the longest arms. So his wingspan is there, um, which is, you know, why he was able to catch those interceptions and be able he's he's a guy that's not afraid to tackle one thing that i like in my cornerbacks is a guy that's not afraid to tackle so um i like that pick they went up to get him they knew what they were doing they knew what they knew they they thought that by the time they picked in their original spot that he wouldn't be there so they did what they needed to do they uh, traded for a fifth round draft pick for next year so they gave up uh next year's fifth round draft pick to move up um, to the top of the sixth round to pick Eric Scott Jr. And um, I like that pickup. Now, um, <clears throat> then they turned around with their second pick in round six and got running back Deuce Vaughn. Now, this one is interesting. Pick number 212 out of Kansas State. Uh, <laughs> short, little short guy, 5'5", 179 pounds. Um, they compare him to Darren Sproles. Not just off the fact that, that Darren Sproles also went to Kansas State. Um, and um, he actually reached out to Deuce Vaughn as well and, you know, you know, gave him, you know, some, some encouragement and stuff and, you know, congratulated him on getting drafted into the NFL. Now, Deuce Vaughn's father, Chris Vaughn, 
is the director of college scouting for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, some people say it's nepotism. I don't I don't believe it's nepotism because the way Jerry and him were talking, like they were looking at three other guys in that realm to pick at that point. But they said that, look, we picked Deuce because we felt like um, we can utilize him. We He earned to be here. And I, and I believe that because looking at his tape, man, you got a small guy like that. Imagine getting him behind this backfield with Tony Pollard. Um, I can see it now. The fans yelling, Deuce! I can see it. I can, I can, I can feel it happening. Um, he's a small guy, so he's they 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 mentioned that he's Houdini in space. I was looking at his highlights, and I'm like, yeah, definitely Houdini because he's small. You can't see him, especially when he gets to the NFL. They're even bigger and taller there. So getting your hands on that guy, good luck. So you know he could just slip through them little small holes and cracks and dips and get some yardage. Now, um, and, and believe it or not, for as small as he is, he can still pass block too. So, and he can catch out the backfield. That's everything that you need in a wide receiver. Now, main main reasons why he's in the sixth round is mainly because his height. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it's it's a lot of teams want bigger, thicker type of running backs. I get that, but um, <laughs> I kind of like the I kind of like the shortness with him. You know, uh, just getting something different on the team. You know what I'm saying? Like something something to throw at the wall. Now. Um, yeah, they, they also call him a bowling ball too. So, you know, he gets in there and gets small and just rolls up in there. Um, so I'm really happy for Deuce Vaughn for getting there. Um, really proud of the, um, the Dallas Cowboys for, for, uh, drafting Chris Vaughn's son. I thought that was a noble thing to do. Although, you know, he, he's not a bad player. It's not like, it's nepotism where they just picked a sorry player just because somebody on the staff is his father. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think it was that type of situation. So, uh, but shout out to, to the Cowboys and, and picking Deuce Vaughn. I know a lot of the fans like this pick as well. Um, because I've been, I've been, you know, listening and hearing things. So yeah. Um, and then with the last pick, the Cowboys in round seven, pick 244 Cowboys pick wide receiver, Jalen Brooks out of South Carolina. Now he transferred from, the Tar Heels from North Carolina to South Carolina and um, he's 6'2", 205 and in the time that he was with the Gamecocks um, he has a total of 110 receptions a total of 1,833 yards and 12 touchdowns in the time that he was with the Gamecocks now he didn't run very fast in the combine which is one of the main reasons why he dropped so far into the draft. He was rated more so a fifth round draft pick, but he didn't get picked to the seventh. Now, uh, Cowboys said that they picked him in the seventh because they could have used him and waited to to select him in the uh, free agency pool, but they felt like a lot of other teams were trying to get a guy like him. So they felt like they were going to have to fight a lot of teams. So they were like, oh, well, let's just go ahead and get him with our last pick. What is it going to hurt? You know what I'm saying? This is There's really no difference from a seventh-round draft pick to an undrafted free agent. Because for most teams, a seventh-round draft pick don't normally make the team. But sometimes they do. I mean, look at look at Tom Brady. He was a six-round six draft pick. And the Cowboys do pretty well with free agents and picking those. But with Jalen Brooks, um, he's not the fastest guy. He ran like a 4.63, which is slow, very slow for a wide receiver. But when you look at his highlights in the game, it looked like he was running faster. Now, I just think that he just had a bad day in in his 40-yard dashes. So, But that hurt his draft stock, unfortunately, because teams look at that and they think that you can't beat coverage. But um, he's definitely a possession receiver. He's definitely a receiver that's a, a role you got to have him in a certain role, a scheme fit type of wide receiver. So we'll see what our wide receivers coach can do with him. If he makes a team, and again, he's got special team ability too. So even if he's not playing, I mean, he's definitely going to be competing with Simi Fajoko and, um, and the other Jalen, Jalen Tobert. So we'll see how that goes. The Dallas Cowboys did get two or three other wide receivers in the undrafted pool. But we'll talk about those in another video. Now, um, I look at this draft as a whole. Like I said, I, I I graded it a B because they did what they were supposed to in the draft. They they got they got 
um, positions of need, right? Um, they didn't just go for the flashy pick. They went for positions of need, and, and I definitely respect that. That is one thing that I look at and I'm like, okay, this is this is what they they needed to do. So I, I give it a B overall. Um, I don't. They didn't breach. Those guys were pick where they were supposed to pick, and we'll see what they do with them. Um, definitely upgraded on defense. Um, I agree that it's you know a small upgrade on offense as well. But I think that when it comes to running back, though, you got a lot of small guys, right? You don't have the skill set that Ezekiel Elliott is. And I, and I feel like a lot of fans have been disrespecting Zeke and saying, oh, we don't need him no more. And I'm like, I don't know where that came from because I feel like y'all were the same people that were yelling Zeke every time he ran for a touchdown or, or, or got good yardage or anything like that. And it's, it's so funny how quick – how fickle we are as a fan base how we just throw away a player but Zeke still has a lot of value he's not that home run hitting guy anymore I'm okay with that but the skill set that he has that pass that pass protection as a running back he has that and I think that you know if they if they bring him back after June 5th if they bring him back on a one-year contract worth up to five mil I'm okay with that because I love Zeke. I think that he is an a asset to this team, and I think that you know his skill set helps with this Dallas Cowboys football team. Even if you use him primarily for goal line rushes and and short yardage, getting those tough yards, that's what he's good at. And I don't think any other running back on this current team could do that. You know, Deuce is a home run guy. Um, Tony Pollard is a home run guy. Um, and, and Ronald Ronald Jones is he's a home run guy. He can also get gritty yards too, but not like Zeke. And none of them can pass protect like Zeke. So at the end of the day, I think they should bring Zeke back, especially for training camp and see what happens. So and get a, get a good competition in there. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think about the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, draft picks of 2023 that's all i have to say for right now like share subscribe to the channel it's your boy e2 blue always keeping it real peace